India has always been an agricultural based economy and for the conservation of this economy, India has taken a very important step in the recent time period of 2025. Uh, what exactly is this step for agricultural development? That is what we are going to see in today's video of Commerce Gyan. This is something very interesting and which will catch your attention. So watch this video till the end and know what exactly the steps India has taken for the purpose. So we all know that India has always been an agro-based economy. Nearly 55% of its population is engaged in agriculture and its allied activities. And contribution of agriculture is also huge, which is 14% of our GDP. So we are an economy which is reliant on agriculture. Now, uh, basically, each part of India has special variety of crops. If you go to see rices in West Bengal, Bihar, Odisha, and uh, Northeast states, then uh, wheat, if you say it's uh, unique for Punjab, Haryana, and UP, the highest production states. And tea is in Assam and Kerala. I've mentioned just a few crops, but India has a lot of such crops which it grows, and uh, it is unique to specific states. Now, there are disruptions in agricultural activity because of war or because of the climate change which takes place around us. Now, if we have these crops, crops are basically, we know that they grow from seeds. And what if these seeds are destroyed, right? And uh, it happens in the case of warlike situation or in case of climate change, then what? Then obviously the whole of the future generations would be at stake and which is very dangerous. So India is taking a very important step for this purpose, for the purpose of conserving and preserving this agricultural economy of ours. For this, India is creating what is called as a doomsday seed vault. So in 1976, this idea was first designed as you can say a seed bank was created and it got a correct and a bigger format in 1996 when a seed vault was created in New Delhi. Now, this was done by the Indian Council of Agricultural Research or ICAR and this body is basically connected to National Bureau of Plant and genetic resources that is also called as NBPGR. So these, this organization, uh, Indian Council of Agricultural Research has basically done, uh, it's like a seed bank which was created for the purpose of conservation of these seeds. Now it consists of nearly 5 lakh accessions. Now what is an accession? Accession is basically it could be like seeds or it could be the tissues of the plants or the plant itself. So for preservation purpose they will use any of these accessions. Uh, and uh, what is there in this particular New Delhi seed bank, or you can say in the case of this seed vault, as it is called, as there are nearly 5 lakh of such accessions and 2,157 species of plants that are very much indigenous to India. It is very much the ones which are from India itself. Another thing is it consists of, it's uh, basically a bank, a uh, seed bank, which is considered as the second biggest global seed bank or gene bank, as we can call it. And the first one of uh, the top, or you can see the largest seed bank in the entire world is the uh, Valbert uh, Global Seed Vault in Norway. So then what is happening in 2025? The basic thing is that due to the threat of war and climate change, uh, like recent time period also, we had operations in Dur and there was a threat that was created over Delhi. There could be attacks on big cities. So uh, basically India has taken an important step and they are creating a second gene bank. Now, we have seen the destruction of seed banks in the recent time periods in different cases, and this has also motivated India to go for a second seed bank. Now, the first uh, instance was about Ukraine, where there was a recent damage which was caused to its gene bank due to the war with Russia. The second instance was Philippines, where the national gene bank of theirs was damaged by a typhoon, a, a big storm which was there in September 2006 and with fire in 2012. A uh, third instance was related to Thailand in 2011. Uh, the National Gene Bank of Thailand, which uh, got flooded and nearly 20,000 unique rice accessions was lost. So Thailand had that uh, different varieties of rice uh, seeds and accessions were kept and which was quite unique. But this got destroyed because it was kept at only one place and there was nothing else stored. And uh, finally, we have another example where we have Italy. Uh, just a two degrees Celsius or something rise in temperature led to nearly 80,000 of accessions being damaged. So uh, these are instances where we can see that having just one seed bank could be dangerous. That means if that is destroyed, everything will go wrong with uh, the agricultural sector. Now, you may not have if a war or climate change destroys certain uh, crops in the actual on site, that is in agricultural fields, then what will you do? There should be something out of, outside the field also where you can conserve and preserve these seeds, right? And this is what exactly the gene bank does. But even that, if we have on, only one single place, it could be harmful. So India thought two are better than one. 
and necessity uh, is there for uh, resilient, sustainable, and inclusive agro development. So, for these reasons, India said no. We don't want only one. We should have at least two gene banks so that we don't face any issues. Now, important thing is that in the Svalbard uh, Global Seed Vault in Norway, we also have uh, the uh, India's NBP GR has kept nearly three thousand three hundred samples there for safety. So, not just in India but also outside India and Norway, we have some. gene banks which are there but of course you cannot keep all your crops because of obvious reasons that we cannot uh, disclose and we cannot give away all the seeds to other countries right we need to keep our uniqueness conserved within our country so that's why uh, seeds are not taken out of india to norway so these 3300 samples could be said to be like the minimal uh, requirement to be kept to for the purpose of resilience in the agricultural sector and that's why we have done that then uh, in budget 2025 what happened they announced the creation of a second gene bank in india that's what we just mentioned and basically the cost of constructing this gene bank is somewhere around 172 crore rupees this is just an uh, understanding or you can say just a budget of the actual budget of the uh, construction cost of this gene bank it could be more also in actuals and if you look at the maintenance of this gene bank roughly 4 crores every year would be the maintenance cost this is the minimal Uh, what i'm telling you could be more also in certain case so we could say this is so we could say this is a very important decision for the future of indian economy because agricultural sector is of key importance to us not just that we are producing agriculture for other countries no we are a huge population huge consumer base within our country itself and we need to take care of that also so uh, having good quality seeds and having uh, you can say the Uh, having good quality seeds having the uh, generation of agricultural produce in the future is of key importance to us also because this will keep our population uh, going and free from starvation hunger and such issues so uh, not just for the purpose of exports but also for the purpose of domestic consumption these gene banks would be of key importance in the future for india so uh, hope this video has helped you to understand a little different aspect of Uh, the gene banks that india is cre has created in the past and is uh, in the process of creation uh, creating in the future so if you like this particular video do share it with the people who may also want to know this information and also just in case you have not joined the journey of commerce gyan do subscribe to this channel hope to see you in the next video of commerce gyan thank you